Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we're working on a large York air handler. This is a four pipe system where they have chilled water and hot water and we're going to be replacing this Bray actuator valve. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we're working on a large York air handler. This system is controlled by BMS. BMS is a building management system, so they can control this unit through the computer. And these are the BMS controls that is tied in with our HVAC unit. So today we're gonna to be replacing a Bray actuator valve. This is a three inch valve. That's the red one right there. There's one there and there's one there. We actually gotta change both, but in this video, we're gonna be changing one. On this side right here, this is our hot water and we are in the heating season so i'm going to begin right here first things first we're going to want to shut down the power to this unit off and i guess we could turn these off too got two pipes coming in this one branches off with a y this is our bypass this is, should be our supply this is a strainer and then this is our return got a valve right here Squeeze on that and bring it in. So we want to valve off our supply and drain the remaining water in this line before we start pulling out that valve so we don't flood this place. Supply is now closed, bypass is closed, and for the other side, might as well just close everything up. Got a valve there. And that's it for that one. Yeah, so that's the valve for the return, right? Hot water return, hot water supply. And then let's see, there's a drain cog right here. We should be able to drain here, or we could also drain through the strainer right there. So I'm climbed up in the unit. This is our strainer. If we take off this cap, we can drain from here. Oh man, that's dirty as hell. Valve isn't holding. I really don't want to work on this valve with water flowing. I was thinking of maybe just having a hose running here, let that drain out while I work with this, but I don't want to deal with that dangerous mess. Just close this valve. I got to change both, so let me see if hopefully the chilled water side valve holds. So I close these up. Let's try to drain this side. All right, this one is just about done. Looks like we're working on the chilled water valve. So the only thing that sucks about this job is the space. So let's begin with taking off this insulation around the valve and freeing this all up. The insulation is taken off. Here's the valve and the electrical. I took a picture of the wiring. Let's take off this BX cable. We got three wires. Disconnected the three wires, terminals one, two, and three. Let's pull this out. I checked for power, of course, first. Everything is safe. So right now, we can have this to the side. And we could begin by taking off this valve. So we have two Victolic couplings right here. And I think that might be our best option to pull this out and rebuild it in a comfortable place and then bring it all back in like one large assembly. All right, so pretty much I'm gonna take off these two bolts, nuts and bolts on both sides. And then this coupling should come right off. I don't have my socket set. So I'm gonna have to do whatever I gotta do. I do have a socket set, but not for this size, but it's really not a big deal. I'm just gonna have to do whatever we gotta do. This is already loose. This side is freed up, and I'm just gonna go ahead and take out this side. Just loosen out those nuts and bolts for the couplings. All right, so for here, 
could just pull this out. All right, I like to keep these like this so you know what's what. Keep that. And then I pull this out. The only thing holding this in is the rubber gaskets at the moment. So you gotta be careful. This thing doesn't drop on you. Some water might drop on us, so just get ready. I'm gonna pull, pull back on this coupling. Just hold it, Chris. All right. All right, let go. All right, just balance it, balance it. Bring it down. Bring it down. Okay. That was it. Just set up a little workstation here. Here's a new valve. And here's the old one. So pretty much we're going to rebuild this setup onto the new valve. And if we look closely, we can see all those little white markings. So what happened here is that water penetrated through the actuator and destroyed all the electrical. So that's probably what happened here. So let's go ahead and begin by taking all this stuff out and transferring it onto this valve. If we look closely, this is a nut and bolt. And the same for the opposite end. The guy who I ordered this with was nice enough to give me some bolts and I think that's what it's for. Four on this end and four on that end. It's gonna, definitely gonna be easier to work with just the bolt rather than the nut and bolt, but let's go ahead and start transferring this. Start by loosening up these nuts and bolts. I really need to get a socket set this size. So, loosen up these four bolts. Let's spin it here this way. loosening up and one more and that's loose so let's put it down little by little just want this the same way we want this to be rebuilt the same exact way as that all right now that can come out that's gonna go just like this. Make sure it's the right size. The gasket is clean. There's a little gasket in here. I'm just gonna wipe this down, make sure it's clean. So it can go against this. And we're just gonna feed the new nuts and bolts through. All right, I put in the four bolts. It looks pretty snug. I'm just hoping there's enough space, enough thread for the opposite end. Looks like there is, hopefully. And pretty much, let's go ahead and take out the next side and transfer it over. Alright, keep taking this off one by one. Right, let's make sure it's straight. Right there. So that's that one. And this is gonna go just like this. This lined up. And we're just gonna put in our four bolts and see how it lines up seems like it's not lining up well with these new bolts what I'm gonna do is just use the old setup to be safe so I'm just trying to line up these threads in the middle here and then we just put the nuts back on and we should be able to tighten it down and everything should be fine I don't want to destroy this thread so what I'm gonna do is put this around and see if maybe I could just grab it and spin it out Hopefully it's not too hard in. Oh, there we go. It's already loose. Perfect. And now we gotta do the same for this end. And that's coming right off. Whew, it's a miracle. So, just transferring it over, that's all. Got everything set up and pretty much 
just want to tighten this down evenly. All right, this is it. Everything's rebuilt. I want to do is clean up these couplings, clean up the Victrolic coupling as well. Make sure everything is nice and clean here. You don't want any debris. And from there, we should be able to mount this. Got the new valve there and this tight space. Here's the light. It's got to go from here to here. So let's get that in there. Take this gasket and mount it onto the pipe and push it back and we'll start with that all right so i got the couplings on each side and it's flush so when i put the system and the piping together i'm going to slide these back and they'll hold and then i can lock down the couplings that back you see this it's getting in the way there we go are you good you good yep okay slide the coupling over okay hold on hold on Try to get this end a little. Slide that coupling over. Two thousand years later. All right, there it is, guys. We just gotta tighten it down. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that was a struggle in here. The space that we're working in is just terrible. Just gotta tighten down on these nuts and bolts for these two couplings. And we're ready to go. All right, I am not doing the next one without the proper socket set. This is a pain in the butt, but we're gonna get it done. All right, let's close this drain and let's open up the water, and see if we have any leaks. Pray to the Lord that there is none. All right, here's the supply valve for here, so let's just crack it open. It's open. I don't see any leaks. Let's open up the other valves. This one is the bypass that stays closed. And I gotta open up that valve to return. All right. So we're only actually testing one side. So at least that side is not leaking. As far as this side, we actually have to open up the valve for it to send water through so we know for sure, but so far so good. So through that hand wheel right there, you are able to manually open this valve, but let's go ahead and get our electrical connections in. We've got to take off four little bolts with the Allen key. The top comes off and let's run in our three wires. All right, let's get that out. Open up one of these knockouts. And let's bring the power in. All right, got our three wires in. I'm gonna spin this on so that locks in. Got the wires in, so from here. I got a wire the same way the other one was. Terminals one, two, and three. Oh man, what a pain that was. But we got our three wires in and we're ready to roll. All right, that's all taken care of. We now have to test the actuator. So at this point I'd say it's safe to turn the power on. I think I hear it opening. Just put the cover on top, and if you can see, it says open. 
it was in the closed position before so that's good valve opened so it responds and there's no leaks it says controlled by bms but i guess it's already in this position maybe if we kill the power it might close but really we need the engineer here to send us the signals so right there it was open right now we got the bms actually calling for cooling and when we call for cooling it closes when we call for heat it opens so it's backwards but i'm thinking i can switch the points for this actuator and we should be okay so there's three points and we have our common and then we have we need power to close and we need power to open and it seems like they're crossed up so i gotta switch two wires it was so hard to get in there. i can't even get a screwdriver in there but i think if I just change, reverse two wires, the black to the blue and blue to the black, that should reverse whatever's happening here. So let's switch those two up and see if this works. All right, so I changed point two with three and three with two. Last thing I want to do is work up top over there. So let's go ahead and call the engineer and have him run the cooling once again. It's stuck right now, closed, so. Let's see what happens. All right, we set it to cooling. Cooling actuator is open. And the heating actuator is closed. And from now we gotta check temperature. Got the thermometer in the duct and look at that. 54 degrees. 12,000 BTUs of raw cooling power. Huh? <laughs> and now we have automatic control with our cooling actuator then tomorrow we got to return for this valve but we got to figure out a game plan either if they want to shut down the riser drain the system so i can replace the valve because it's not holding or we figure out another solution but this one needs to be changed next but i'm glad we got it going right now and we fixed up the wiring all right so the system's satisfied and you can see that valve is closed that one is as well but our main focus is only on this one beautiful and that was it actuator has been replaced with the valve if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time